If you're from the US, or you've been to the US, or you know people in the US, or you even just know that the US exists, you've probably heard about Trader Joe's. This grocery store chain with an insane cult following is known for one-of-a-kind products like butternut squash pizza dough, everything but the bagel seasoning, cauliflower gnocchi, pumpkin butter, and other food items that I didn't know even existed. Having a unique product line does not explain the insane fandom that this grocery store has. So we want to figure out what Joe knows that we don't. A huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this video. So as a Canadian, I learned a lot in the process of making this video. Trader Joe's was founded by a guy named, you guessed it, Joe. Good old Joe Colomb founded the grocery store in California in 1967. He designed the store with college-educated and well-traveled customers in mind. Even the store's decor reflects this with its South Seas theme. The store basically looks like a tiki hut and all the employees, sorry, I mean captain and crew members, wear nifty Hawaiian shirts shirts and stuff like that. Keep in mind that in the 1960s, the tiki bar theme was really popular in the United States. People loved sipping on pina coladas out of coconuts and bars that were covered in bamboo. Even the name Trader Joe's is a nod to a popular tiki bar in California at the time called Trader Vic's. The idea is that well-traveled customers can go to Trader Joe's and find unique international foods that they can't find at other grocery stores like the Norwegian crisp bread or zoob sauce. Joe wanted people to believe that they sailed off to far off lands to bring back these hard to find foods. After 13 years, Joe decided to sell the company to a German entrepreneur named Theo Albrecht. And that's when the brand started to expand across state lines. Incidentally, Theo owns a number of Aldi grocery stores, but the two chains have nothing to do with each other. They're more like distant cousins that never speak because of their parents' awkward drama and the one time that they made out at that family gathering. Hey, look at that. We didn't get swallowed up into hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. <laughs> the chain exploded across the US in the 1990s, quadrupling the number of stores between that day and 2001. And today, there are over 500 Trader Joe's locations in the US. But despite literally taking over America, one thing that Trader Joe's does better than any other major chain is that they still feel like a local neighborhood market. The stores have a smaller square footage than just about any other major grocery store making them the antithesis to the gigantic superstores like Walmart and Costco. You also won't find many national food brands there, like Tostitos or Coca-Cola. Trader Joe's is known for their one-of-a-kind items, but even their basics like tortilla chips and sparkling water are under the store's brand. It makes customers feel like they're getting this local market experience while also getting access to food from around the world. One of their best products is their unexpected cheddar cheese, which has a label that says, tastes like an aged premium cheddar with a hint of Parmesan. This descriptive writing is enticing to consumers who want to feel like they're buying an exclusive specialty product. Fun fact, unexpected cheddar cheese is what I like to call my bowel movements after I go to Taco Bell. <laughs> now we're going to take a quick break here to thank our sponsor for today's video, which is Shopify. So believe it or not, Future Proof is a business with employees and schedules, etc. And we talk about business. So we thought it was a perfect integration for us to have Shopify on as a sponsor. Shopify is an easy all-in-one commerce platform where you can start, grow, and manage your business. Shopify will let you sell online, in person, and on all those major social media apps that these kids are using nowadays. And honestly, I kind of wish that I had known about this before I started my first business. They make it super Super easy to set up a small business and storefront through their platform and because they are sort of the brand behind the brands Shopify is really only successful when their merchants are successful so you know that they are really there for the long haul we think it is so cool that Shopify is out here providing a service that helps business innovate and make the future better for everyone else. Shopify's new starter plan lets you create a simple store in minutes for only five bucks. This helps introduce users 
access to commerce and is easily upgradable to unlock the full potential of Shopify as their businesses grow. It is really simple and you can get access to a 14 day free trial if you use the link down in the description. So get started with your store today. Another thing that's special about Trader Joe's is the Trader Joe's experience itself. With most chain grocery stores, what you want is to get in, get your stuff and get home. It's just another weekly chore that has to be done, but Trader Joe's is somewhere you might want to hang out. Stay-at-home moms will pack up their kids and roam the aisles just to get some free samples and a little serenity. It is not chaotic and overwhelming like a superstore, so you feel at home there. They even use hand-drawn signs to sell this ideal of a home away from home. However, there are some things that the big superstores have that Trader Joe's doesn't, starting with a huge product line. Trader Joe's intentionally keeps their product lines small to create a sense of urgency. They stock about 4,000 SKUs at a time versus Walmart, which stocks around 75 million SKUs. SKUs, as I learned, is stock keeping units, for those of you who don't know. Basically, it's just like the number of items that they have in a store. Since they don't have a ton of shelf space, products go in and out based on demand and seasons. If you're obsessed with the organic Madagascar vanilla bean paste that only comes in stock for the holidays, you gotta stock up on that stuff so that you can be using it in your baked goods for the rest of the year. Seriously, there are Reddit threads about this stuff and people are reselling it on Amazon. It has also been proven actually that people like having fewer options to choose from because it's easier to make a decision. Think of it like, eating at the Cheesecake Factory versus In-N-Out Burger. You might have more options at the Cheesecake Factory, but you gotta spend 20 minutes reading through their novel of a menu. Meanwhile, you can just roll up to In-N-Out Burger, order a double-double animal style burger in like 30 seconds and be done with it. Granted, you will have an unexpected cheddar cheese experience shortly after. Another thing that the big guys have that Trader Joe's doesn't is online shopping, curbside pickup, and delivery. They also don't partner with Instacart or any of the apps that'll shop for you. If you wanna get the goods, you gotta show up and do it yourself in person. Because the truth is Trader Joe's wants you to be in their store. Consumers get so hooked on the unique products and the local market experience that they come back just to get that fix. The chain is also known for its incredibly friendly staff, which of course adds to the overall experience. If you're curious about the plantain chips and you wanna try before you buy, a crew member will open a bag right there in front of you. According to Trader Joe's president, Brian Paulbaum, being an outgoing and friendly person is a literal job requirement. The crew members seem to genuinely enjoy working there too. And in 2019, Forbes magazine named Trader Joe's one of the best companies to work for in America, thanks to benefits like high hourly wages, retirement plans, and medical plans. One guy even went viral for working at Trader Joe's in 2018, actor Jeffrey Owens. Owens played Elvin in the Cosby Show in the 90s and since has gone on to have a successful acting career and teach at Yale. But in 2017, he got a job at Trader Joe's because the company gave him flexibility to schedule his shifts around auditions. But at this point, you're wondering why a Future Proof video is so overtly positive and optimistic. Well, don't worry. We're ruining it now. It has recently come out that crew members voted to unionize at Trader Joe's in locations like Minneapolis. This is the second TJ's location to unionize and a third store in Colorado is also flirting with the idea. The employees in Minneapolis decided to unionize for two main reasons. Their benefits weren't as generous as they used to be and they were concerned about the store's safety protocols. But it does look like Trader Joe's might push back on this whole idea. And the best part of this plan is, no one can stop me. But the most important thing for Trader Joe's is probably what is most important at any grocery store, and that is the price. Trader Joe's is known for their low prices, like their line of organic wine that you can buy for $4 a bottle. They credit their low prices to the fact that they don't buy brand names, they don't spend money on advertising, and their stores have a pretty low operational cost because they're so small. You'll never see them run a sale or pass out coupons, but nobody really cares because the prices are low to begin with. Trader Joe's bread and butter is their exclusive branded products, but it turns out that they aren't all that exclusive. They were 
fake? Of course they were fake! While some international items really are flown in from Italy, India, and other places around the world, other products are made by the same manufacturers that make products for their competition. For example, Trader Joe's fruit smoothies are suspected to be basically the same as Naked Juices, which is owned by PepsiCo. Trader Joe's gets away with calling these products exclusive by tweaking the recipe ever so slightly so that's still technically one of a kind. They use this method for a lot of their more basic products. When asked about this, the execs at Trader Joe's never confirm that their products are the same as other brand name products, but they're also extremely hush-hush about their business practices. The suppliers of these products also stay quiet because they don't want the public to know that they're making virtually the same products for Trader Joe's at lower prices, and then also giving them to other brands who sell them at higher prices. If everyone found out that the Trader Joe's pita chips for $2 a bag were the same as the Stacy's pita chips, which are made by Frito-Lay for $4.79 a bag, I think the global economy would just crumble. Now, if you find this kind of thing interesting, we were actually working on a no name brand video, which I personally have wanted to know about for a long time. So maybe hit that subscribe button to check that out. Now you might think that as these things came to light and things were revealed to the consumers, they would feel betrayed by their dear Joe, but that was not at all the case. It turns out that because of these coarse strings as an enjoyable place to shop with low prices, people are willing to overlook a lot of stuff. Another very common complaint is the vegetable section at Trader Joe's, which is very limited, far from fresh, and often wrapped in a rather large amount of plastic. This is interesting because a lot of consumers automatically assume that Trader Joe's has a smaller environmental footprint than other mega chains like Walmart or Costco. The stores are a quarter of the size, they stock less product, and the local market vibe gives off this sort of planet-friendly impression. But that's not really the case. As much as they try to present this local hunky-dory small company kind of vibe, they are a large corporation just like every other one. In 2020, the Environmental Investigation Agency listed Trader Joe's as one of the least sustainable grocery stores in the US. The main reason they got this score is because of child labor violations that were uncovered in their cocoa products, and because their refrigerators were leaking ozone-destroying substances. In 2016, they settled a lawsuit with the EPA for violating the Clean Air Act, but they haven't disclosed how they've actually solved the problem or if they have at all. Now recently, I've actually been to a Trader Joe's uh, and I gotta say, I kinda get it. It's, it's a way better experience than the big box store. And the Tiki theme is a little weird nowadays if I'm being honest, but it is an enjoyable place. And I think we would all be better off if grocery stores felt more like comfortable places to visit rather than these huge, warehouses where you buy massive flats of food that you probably won't eat. So my fingers are personally crossed that Trader Joe's will trade their way into a more ethical and sustainable means of production in the future. And hopefully we haven't made any of the big Trader Joe's fans angry. Let us know down in the comments and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching.